Susan Burton is the real deal. She is a person who knows the system from the inside out, who understands the, the, the brokenness of the so-called criminal justice system, who came out of the system, who's helping other people come out, who's helping other people be strong, at the same time that she asks the uncomfortable questions with utter fearlessness a true drum major for justice. Please welcome Susan Burton of A New Way of Life. A New Way of Life is a bridge, a bridge from despair to hopefulness. It's a bridge to transformation, redemption, a bridge for healing, and a bridge to work, a bridge to school, a bridge to feeling purposeful, a bridge from darkness to light. This is Susan Burton. She's the founder and executive of A New Way Life. And this is Samantha. Jenkins. And whatever we can do to help you uh, pursue your goals, we, you know, you know, we're here for you. What kind of plans you have? I plan on going to school. Whatever you need to, you know, get your school going, you yeah. let us know. Okay. We want to keep you grounded and connected. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. A new way of life is the home. Uh, we're going to get you situated, and we're going to explain everything. It's a home where. Women can come and feel accepted and supported and safe. If you find any problems, just let me know. We can help you get yourself where you want to be in life. It's home for so many women who have no place to go. I was locked up for four years, that's a long time. I was happy to be out, but still scared. Because, you know, I guess because we're creatures of habit and you want to feel secure and safe. They drive you to the uh, bus station and, you know, they give you $200 and they buy your ticket out of your money and put you on a bus. And uh, you're just headed to wherever. And so I arrived downtown LA, and it was really scary. It was really scary. And I looked like I came from prison, you know. I was dusty looking, you know, with jeans and a paper bag. Everybody knows that you're from prison. They know, just by the way you look, and they know. You got approached by everybody. There were people asking you if you needed a ride, telling you that you look fine. Drug addicts, people living that life, and you know they are. It's so easy to get lured especially if you're scared, and, and I'm going to be honest, I was scared. And I felt like I was just standing there buck naked. I didn't have any place to go. I really didn't. And I called Miss Burton, and uh, I told her, I said, I received a letter from you, and you said for me to call you and that you would pick me up. And she says, where are you? And I told her, she says, I'll be there in about 15 minutes. And she came and picked me up. So they're coming to a place be able to drink out of a glass and not plastic, to sleep on a mattress and not metal, and to have food, have choices, just stuff people take for granted. Ms. Burton is so sweet. She's a good lady. I'm glad she picked me up. This house is the beginning of a new way of life. Uh, I, I got it uh, in 1998, 
and fashioned the house for women who had been incarcerated. And that's where I started. When I left prison, I went to treatment and got a job. And, you know, I saved the money and I saved about $12,000. Yeah, and I mean, I saved every dime. Some months I didn't spend but $40 a month for anything that I needed and um, everything else I, I saved. And I didn't understand why or what I was saving for. I didn't know I was on my way to creating something that would um, have the, the ability to change lives. I tried to give help in the same fashion that I had received it. There was a lot of movement in the house, a lot of uh, cooking and TV watching and healing going on. And a part of it was my healing also. I relate really closely with the women. I understand what they're feeling. I've felt the same thing. I've had the same fears, the same anger, the same frustration. I lost my son and um, he was accidentally uh, killed by a police officer. And um, I just didn't know what to do. My whole world just spun. The pain of everything was so um, unbearably present in my body. I think if you looked at me, you could almost see it or touch it. Um, and uh, it was all the disappointment, all the grief, all the sorrow that um, had to be addressed. So I was able to address it um, through, through someone helping me. I'm about to go visit with my daughter. I'm a little bit fearful um, because of the way my lifestyle was a few years back when I was in my addiction. I started prostituting myself and that is the worst thing ever in her eyes. It was my survival, my way of surviving and in order for me to be able to go and prostitute myself, I had to be high. I couldn't do it sober. I would wake up in the morning. I'd be in a motel or a hotel, and I just couldn't do anything without smoking some drugs. I have a lot of shame for the way that I was living and, and embarrassment, and I know that she was embarrassed. I've always tried to communicate with her, but she wouldn't open up. So I don't know where we're gonna go with this or how we're gonna get through it, but I'm gonna try talking to her and hopefully she'll open up and we can get past it. This is my room and this is my bed. And I was right here on the computer. I like the fact that I know how to use it, so it's so cool. I just wish I could use it to get a job. I'm healthy, I'm employable, I'm willing. I've been out of prison for just about a year, and I've been looking for a job ever since I've been out. I was a nurse before, and I never had a resume, and I just walked in, and they would hire me right on the spot. Now I have all this resume, the certificates, and all this stuff, but it doesn't matter, because my background is in the way. We all need a job. We all need a job. Yes, we do. Thank you, baby. I like being a nurse, but because of the fact that I am an ex-fellow, that's going to come up. Let's see what we got. What's this? Hi, right, we're here from the state of Nevada. We're recruiting for future police officers. Thank you so much. I was offered training as a, um, for a police officer. I was like, okay, thank you. Let's see what else is here. You do service and hospitality industry. But you have to have experience. Well, at least a year experience. I see. At least we got a ride and it's a beautiful day and I'm in this, good company. Yes. So I'm cool with that. Yeah. We don't get a lot of money here. 
we barely make it from month to month, keeping the doors open, keeping food in the houses, keeping the lights on, keeping staff paid. That that invoice should have been paid, right? And then do, how much am I short from payroll? That's still short. Okay, all right, bye. It was 1999. I was a few months over and it angered me that I would be treated so cruel and caged and chained for a drug charge. And I knew thousands of women just like me who had been negatively impacted by the war on drugs, who were incarcerated on a turnstile going in and out of prison, not able to get help. Imagine $70,000 a year to keep us contained, just squandering public funds. I just got a notice saying that mental health services had been defunded. Hell, they could have sent me to Yale <laughs> for all those years <laughs> and got so many degrees. You know, six prison sentences. You know, six degrees, right? <sighs> If it's not one thing, it's two or three. Now I know where all the pictures are. Where is that picture? Oh my gosh. I might have been 13 or 14 on this picture. Dominique has some resentments towards me because of my addiction and I was in and out of prison. This is a picture of me when I got my GED in prison. I was in prison when I took this picture. I went to prison for voluntary manslaughter. I left in 1989. I didn't come home until 1996. I was happy to come back into my daughter's life, but I didn't know how she would accept me because I had been gone so long. You know, I would stay clean and sober and then I'd go back to that lifestyle again. So I knew that I had to work hard to earn her trust again. I couldn't trust her. So through her addiction, as I got older, I knew I couldn't trust her. I didn't trust her with anything. I didn't trust her with my child. I didn't trust her with me. So once I became a parent, I got so protective that I think I cut her off even further to where she was just the crackhead. She was the crackhead. She went back to jail a lot. Parole violation after parole violation repeatedly. I'll never forget the day that I had to kick the freaking door down to get to my mom who's getting high in the next room, who stole my son's piggy bank to go buy drugs. I couldn't think. I never stole your son. No, I did not, Dominique. Mom, there's a lot of stuff that you say you didn't, you don't think you did, but I think that you're, when you were active in your drug use, you don't remember a lot of stuff. You don't remember a lot of stuff. I never told you how ashamed you made me because I didn't want to hurt you. I already knew how ashamed I made you, Dominique. But when people would tell me stuff that they saw you doing, I'm like, that's my mom. Like, like, did you not know that it would never come back to me? Did you not know that I would, like, not hear these things or not see it myself? I just want us to get through this and get past it someday. I mean, you hurt a lot of people. I know and you have a lot of relationships to fix. You can't hide the things, the mistakes you make. You can't act like they didn't happen or push them aside and think you can start all over. I'm getting better. I'm not there yet, but 100%, but I'm, I'm working on it. You are, you do. Okay. I guess that's all I could ask for. Okay, and you got it. Thanks, a long time coming. <laughs> Yeah. There's a chicken in the backyard. Or... Hi there. Are you thirsty or you want something to eat? I think he's hungry. He's looking for food. I had a big tax bill, and uh, 
I just panicked. I did, and um, I started talking to a friend that said, I can help you out. You could make some quick money selling drugs. I was selling crack, crystal, marijuana, Vicodin, Viagra, everything I could get my hands on. I was just going to do it for a little while, pay my bills, and be done. But that didn't happen. I got four years. I went to see the social worker sign up for food stamps. She asked me if I had a conviction or anything like that on my record, and of course I told her the truth, you know. I said, yes, I have, and she said, what? And I said, for sales of, uh, you know, narcotics. And she says, oh, you're not eligible for food stamps. They won't give me food stamps because of my conviction. They won't give me low-income housing because of my conviction. And trying to find a job is like they throw your application in the trash. I feel like I'm drowning. I could call up a drug dealer right now, somebody that knows me, and uh, I don't have to have any money. They would give me something to sell, and I would pay them back, and then I would be on my way. If I don't get a job, I have to do something. I need to eat. I have no choice. I can understand how other people that get out of prison when the, they, they're not that motivated and doors are closed in their face. I can see how they go back to prison because you try, you know, you put on the right clothes, you get the right training, you go to school, and then you apply for a job and they don't give it to you because of uh, your background. They won't give you one chance. So it's very easy to get back into that, that lifestyle. Here's another one. Isn't that one pretty? They are cute. Do we have a yellow one? There's a yellow one, too. I shouldn't say we. We're not allowed pets, but oh, well. <laughs> Everything likes it here. It's a good place. Well, it was pretty deep, but I believe she got a chance to say a lot of things that, you know, she had been holding in. Yeah. And a lot of it was hurtful. The pain that our children incur, we just don't know how, how, how deep and how far it goes. Mm -hmm. It's taken me over 10 years to receive some forgiveness for the character I was mm -hmm. through my um, alcoholism and addiction. And I did the same thing that you were doing, that you're doing now. Yeah, you are very inspiring. And um, I consider you to be my mentor. I have never told you this, but um, I admire you. Thank you. And um, I'm staying under your wing. You are not getting rid of me. And I want to learn from you. And I want to be like you. Yeah. And give back and help others that come behind you. Well, I don't know if I told you, but I admire you too. And I think about you um, and where you're headed, and it makes my heart very, very happy. Because um, you are the reason I do what I do. I got blessed with a job. I'm working in the laundromat. The lady that owns the laundromat is an acquaintance of Miss Burden. And she gave me two days a week part-time at $8 an hour, and I am thrilled. It's keeping the washers and dryers clean and giving people change. And she gave me the keys, and I count money. She trusts me. I'm happy to have a job. It's just awesome. I wouldn't be able to survive on the money that I make here if I left a no way life. So I need some more hours. I need to have my own housing. And I need transportation. But anyway, I'm happy I have this. This is a start. One step at a time, you know? And greens in it. A little dab do me. Starving. Yeah, me. Yeah. You gotta when, do what you gotta do. When did you start? 
I started um, last Wednesday. Wow. So it's just two days a week. Chasing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm a bubble chaser, which is okay. It's a job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm thankful. You know what? You never gave up looking for a job. Never. And I'm still not giving up. Mm-hmm. My dream is to be a nurse. I just love that kind of work. And I have the skills. I hate to see them go to waste. I don't think God wants me to waste my skills. You're supposed to use whatever you have to help others. So in one way or another, I'm going to do that. I want you guys to meet my daughter, Fondy. Um, her and my grandkids will be here. Wow. So you guys will finally get a chance to meet her. She look like you, so. Stacey Perry. I think she looks like her dad, but she's a combination. I think the relationship with my daughter has gotten better, and I know that I can't go back and change things, but I just want to make things better from here on out. You know, we're working on some things because she had a lot of anger. Issues. Issues with me, yeah, and abandonment issues. Of course. And, That's good. Yeah, so, and she and she's calling me more, so, you know, and she always says, Mom, I'm really proud of you. Yeah. And that opened up the door for us to start some healing. Mm -hmm. That's good. And things are good. That's good, yeah, Stacey. things are good. We have got to build an underground railroad for people returning home from prison. An underground railroad. Courageous people like Susan Burton have been doing this work for a long time. She's building the underground railroad. But we all need to take part in that. We all need to create safe places where people feel welcome. And we need to begin to open our hearts open our minds, open our doors to people returning home from prison.